Okay, so this is the follow-up video to the, the tire blowout video that was online recently. And I had a lot of people asking me to make sure that I came back and explained what happened when I found out what actually happened. And we do now know uh, pretty much what it was. So we'll get into it in a second. There are a lot of comments on the original video, people putting forward ideas, um, saying it was the tire, saying it was the wheel at fault, saying it was me at fault, that I didn't have a clue what I was doing and I was just doing all this crazy stuff and of course it was gonna blow off. So anyway, all that's been kind of put to rest a little bit. We'll see in the report that uh, Continental have just sent me. So basically, you know, Continental, I reached out to them and, and Extra Light, the wheel manufacturer, Continental have been really excellent in the whole the whole journey. They wanted to see the tire initially and then realized that there's not a great deal of point in looking at the tire if they don't see the wheel that it's going on. So I sent them both and they had them both for a good four weeks or so. And they even sent it off to a special 3D mapping lab that they have in Czechoslovakia, I think. Uh, so they did it really thoroughly, they did a full report and we now have some conclusions about what happened. So yeah, without any further ado, let's have a look into it. Okay, well, this is where it all happened a few weeks ago. This is where the tire blew off in my kitchen at five bar. And now that we have this comprehensive report back from Continental, we can kind of see a little bit what happened. This is the, the wheel in question, hookless, obviously. And we're looking mainly at two dimensions, the, the wall height here, and also the diameter, the inside diameter of the wheel here, D1. So the ETRTO recommendation is six mil, plus or minus a half, and the diameter to be 622, more or less, plus or minus a half. Now, what was found in the four different positions around the wheel was that the wall height was only five mil. So it's half a mil, too small. And that the diameter was anything between one mil and half a mil, too small as well. Now, when you add those two together, it starts to become quite a significant difference from what is recommended and what you should be, should be having. So the fact that the tire jumped off is perhaps not so surprising anymore because none of these measurements are within these specs at all. So, you know, you, you, you've got to be pitching it between these really for, for safety. You can't, you can't go below. And bear in mind that, that you could have made it that bit bigger to be on the top end of these, of these uh, specs here and you'd still be okay. So why make it so small? It's just asking for trouble, in my opinion. And then they took the tire that I used and they put it on their own, not on my wheel, but on a, on a test rig, which has the minimum ETRTO specs. So basically uh, these up here as a, as a minimum and they inflated it to five and a half bar and it held fine for five minutes and they kept inflating it and it jumped off at nine bar, which is obviously an acceptable value. So it kind of shows that the tire really w was okay. And bear in mind that this tire had already jumped off my wheel twice. So it's probably slightly weakened anyway. Um, yeah, you know, it doesn't get better really in the fact that they've also noticed that on the side of the wheel, it states that you can take a, a 25 mil up to six and a half bar, which is not in line with recommendations either, either by Continental or ETRTO. So, you know, given that it didn't even take five bar, I don't know how it's gonna take six and a half. And, you know, I, I put all these things to extra light and yeah, we've had some discussions, let's put it that way, backwards and forwards. And yeah, it, it seems like the position of extra light is that originally a lot of these tubeless tires were extremely tight and extremely difficult to fit. And so they seem to be happy with releasing a slightly smaller wheel to, to ease fitment. But I think what's happened in the meantime is, is that 
some of the tire manufacturers have actually increased the diameter of their tires very slightly. So it's like extra light have gone one way, the tires have gone the other. And now we have a fit which is too loose. And initially, you know, I mean, extra light seemed to just be saying, well, we'll swap them for some semi-hooked wheels of ours, which is kind of like the older model. And it's, it's a narrower rim. It's a 38 mil, not 39 mil deep. I'm not super keen to be honest and at this point I would actually just rather have a refund and I kind of think that I'm entitled to one. I haven't really made much fuss about this at all. For me the wheels don't really uh, do what they're supposed to do which is they are supposed to be able to take a 5000 STR to 6.5 bar. They can't even take it to 5 bar. What Extra Light have said is that you have to keep adding wraps of tape until the wheel fits. Now, for me, that's not really an engineering solution. How many wraps do you add? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? And at what point does it feel okay when it's like you kind of break your wrist trying to get the tire on, then you've got enough wraps of, of tape. And also the, the more wraps of tape you put on, the smaller you're making the wall height because you're building up tape. So the wall height is reducing as well. So I, I don't think really, you know, if I've got to put five wraps of tape on, to make the tire work properly, it's not really a proper solution and I'm not happy with that. So I would rather just send them back and start from scratch. And I think what this shows is really that the whole hook list thing is just a little bit of a minefield because this is Zip's hook list compatibility chart and it just shows you how there's a whole bunch of tires out there that will work and some that won't work with your wheels. And, you know, there's there's quite a few crosses on here, not just the 24s and 25 mils, but also the 26s. So you've got to go down and you need to look at your tire. You need to double check that it's good. Uh, the Specialized 26 won't work. It's, it's just, you know, it's a headache. You've got to be absolutely sure that the tire that you're picking is, is good for your wheel. And if it's not, you're gonna have problems, which could, could be a blowout at speed. And I just don't really understand why you would introduce a sort of negative safety measure that reduces safety and, in, and increases complication. You know, if you look at every other industry, be it aviation, motorsport, whatever, they're always going for the, for the safer solution. They're always trying to make it that bit safer, that bit more foolproof. Here, we're going the other way. It's like we're opening up problems and okay, fine. If you pick the right tire for your wheel, then you're gonna be okay. Most likely you're gonna be okay. Don't, don't overinflate it and you'll be good. But what happens when you sell that wheel or your bike to somebody else who, who doesn't really you know, read all the latest things about bikes and isn't gonna go and check this chart and thinks one day, oh, well, I'll go, I fancy a narrower tire. I'll go from a 28 to a 26. And then suddenly he's in a whole world of pain because it, it doesn't work and he's not really gonna know that. So, and the margins of, of manufacture are so fine here that it has to be absolutely bang on. There can be no variation in the tires, no variation in the rims, because if there are, then again, you're gonna have issues. If the tire's slightly too big, if the rim's slightly too small, then there could be a problem. And on top of all that, bear in mind that all of these manufacturers are saying, do not go above five bar. Now, how is it all of a sudden that we've gone from happily riding seven bar and enjoying the, the low CRR that you get from higher pressures to just saying, oh, five bar's okay. I, I don't wanna ride five bar. I wanna ride six or seven. You know, the roads here in Mallorca are, are relatively good. I'll give you that, and I'm, uh, but I'm fairly light. But I just don't like the feel of a five bar tire when you're pumping out the saddle, pushing hard on the front. I don't like it squidging all over the place. So. Yeah, it, it's just not for me. You know, it's just, uh, I think it, it's been a steep learning curve for me. And I just do not see any decent benefits in hookless that I would I would want to have. And especially not for all the hassle and danger that, 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 that comes with it. So the wheels have gone back to, to extra light now. We're going to thrash out some sort of deal, hopefully. And um, I'm back to tubs which have served me super well for 20 years. I think they're, it's an excellent system. There's no, no issues with, with tubs. You have a relatively low CRR. Uh, they're nice and light. They're, they feel good. 
so I'm not going to bother with hookless really it's just it's just not worth the grief and on a final note it's worth bearing in mind that with tubs you can inflate them to like you know 13 bar if, if you want to I, I inflate mine to super hard super high when I'm setting them overnight just to get the, the glue nice and nice and cured and it, with normal clinchers on, on a hooked wheel you can also go pretty much as hard as you like it's just it's not something you have to worry about so now people using hookless need to be constantly thinking i've got to watch the pressure here because I, I can't go too high and that's just not a good thing so final final word on extra light extra light is a great company that's been around for many many years and have been making great products for a long time i have bought things from them for many years now back to when i was racing mountain bikes and if you look on their website you'll see they've got a whole host of super trick blingy stuff that you would love to have on your bike and so what happened with their hookless wheels well i think it's just that hookless is a relatively new technology and the tire and wheel manufacturers are still kind of trying to get in line with each other and make sure that they're talking to each other and the whole compatibility thing, and this is where ETRTO comes in, but they don't seem to have any outright power. It's just purely advisory. But someone really needs to go out there and say, okay guys, the wheels and the tires, they have to be produced within these tolerances and not one micron outside. Because as soon as you step outside, any of those, you're gonna have issues. And I think that's what's happened here.